Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We are so that was really good. Yeah. I like that. Good morning. We appreciate you being here. Just a quick note before we start. Pastor uh, Mike and Laura are away today. Um, Pastor Mike's dad, who you guys know is not real young, um, asked if they could spend the weekend with them. And so that's where they're at. And I told them that's great. So you've got us today. <laughs> but most of all, you've got Jesus today, and we're going to have a great time in the house of the Lord. Come on and stand with us, please, as we worship the Lord together today. It's going to be a great time. <laughs>
agree with you on that, Jeff. One of my favorite songs, definitely most meaningful song there is that we sing here. You all may be seated. And uh, this is normally the time Pastor Mike comes up and reads all the announcements. So you stuck with me today. <laughs> and there's only one that I want to remind you about, uh, and that is next Sunday is our, I guess you can call it an annual, right? Our annual Super Bowl Sunday, soup spelled with S-O-U-P. And that should uh, give you a hint as to what it's all about. We're going to have a, like a fellowship meal here after church next Sunday. So please bring with you a crock pot full of your favorite soup or chili or other similar dish. <laughs> preferably <laughs> edible. Yeah, preferably edible, right? <laughs> and, uh, and we're just going to stick around after our service uh, next Sunday and enjoy some time of fellowship. Uh, so hope, hopefully you'll all uh, be able to participate in that. All right, well, uh, let's stand to greet one another. Would you please? Well, we're all ready to start singing again. What about you? Well, come on, let's stand and sing. search the world
for ashes. You turn shame into glory. into gardens, you turn bones into armies, you turn seas into highways, you're the only one who can, you're the only one who can, you're the only one who can. Amen, and let the people say amen. Powerful, beautiful new song that God has given us to share with you this morning. I, I must confess, this was a this was a Jeff pick. I'm going down the road in my bus. I drive school bus, if you don't know. I was going down the road in my school bus, and there weren't any kids on the bus. And I got the radio on, and I'm going down the road, and I start hearing this song. separation of church and state don't believe it I'm going down the road and I'm listening to this song and I'm just worshiping the Lord tears are running down my face there's cameras all over the bus <laughs> I start laughing as I said man I hope they hear this
you are in this place in such an awesome way, in such a glorious way. We have sensed your presence here in a, in a mighty way. And we praise you today and we thank you, Lord. We welcome you here, first of all. We welcome your presence here. Maybe not other places. You may not be welcome, but Lord, you are welcome in this place today. We welcome you to walk up and down these aisles. We welcome you to touch our hearts. We welcome a God moment in this place today. May your presence just move upon this congregation. Lord, from this powerfully anointed worship team all the way around the congregation to the front and the back and the sides, may your glory and your presence be felt. We pray for those today who are sick in body. And we declare that we are a people that still believe you're a God who heals. We still believe you heal. We still believe you deliver. We still believe you answer prayer. So in Jesus' name today, we are asking. We're not demanding. We are asking our Heavenly Father to reach out to those who are sick in body to those who are hurting, to those that are going through horrible times in their emotional life right now, through discouragement and depression, fear, anger, anxiety. Lord, we pray your touch upon them. We pray for our wonderful pastor, Pastor Mike and Laura. Lord, we just ask that God, you would just bless them. Anoint them, let them have a refreshing in their spirit and a refreshing in their souls today. God, we're just so blessed to be here. We just pray that, that each one of us today, Lord, me especially, I pray for me today. God, may I have a, a God moment today. May I have a God moment today. I pray for everyone here that we might have a God moment today. That as I pray all the time, may we not just be stirred in this place today. May we be changed by the power of the Lord, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thanks,
the silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. And I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. There is no life, no life without its hunger. Each restless heart beats so imperfectly. But when you come and I am filled with wonder, sometimes I think I glimpse eternity. That was great. That was great. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, TJ. Man, God can raise us up, can he? I'm going to see what I can do about this thing here. Now, I don't know which way I'm going. But God moments. I've learned on my, I've learned on my school bus some, some fun things. And, and, and it has to do with you can say the same thing in a lot of different ways. And it seems to have different meanings. How many of you know that? You can, you can say, just, don't just sit there. How many of you know that? Okay. You can say, you can say, 
come on, stop it. Or you can say, stop it, like, stop it. <laughs> or you can say, stop it. Same word. Man, it's got a lot of different meanings, doesn't it? We, we come into the presence of God today, and I am convinced that there are some moments when God wants to speak to us, and we can say, well, I've heard all that before, but not today, because I'm believing that God's going to speak to you and to me in a God moment where we can say, but God. In other words, I can't go on that mountain. TJ just talked about standing on the mountain. I can't go on the mountain, but for God. I can't stand through that stormy sea, but for God. I've got to have, I've got to have God. Sometimes we say, but God, or but God. Well, today we're saying, but God, but for God. Let me see if I can get this here. The, the story is about King David. Y'all know about King, how many of you know about King David? All right, half of us. <laughs> how many of you know about King David? There you go, okay. King David was, was a was a great man of God. He loved the Lord, and yet there were times in his life when he really messed up too, right? We're talking about, this morning we're talking about how King David was anointed by Samuel to be the king of Israel. Now remember, Israel already had a king. His name was Saul. Well, Saul didn't appreciate it too much that David was anointed king when Saul was already king. Sounds like some of our politicians today. And he didn't like it very well. So David was on the run because Saul was trying to kill him. Now remember, David was already the anointed of God. David was already had the blessing of God. In Sunday school, I was teaching about how that, that when, when Samuel anointed Saul to be king... It wasn't just like we, we do nowadays, you know, we got this little flask of oil and we, we put a little cross. I mean, what he would do is he'd take, let me just say this, he'd take a, a gallon bucket, half gallon bucket, whatever. And the, and, the, and the man of God would get down on his knees like this and then the prophet of God would pour that over top of him and it would run down his hair, run on his robe, run down his beard. In Sunday school, I said I was going to ask for volunteers this morning. And the prophet of God then anointed David like this. David understood the anointing, and now he's on the run. Man, that doesn't seem right, does it? Don't, don't you just wish that when you came to the Lord, everything then was perfect? Has that happened for any of you? No. We all still have issues, don't we? And here's David, and he's running from, from Saul because he knows that he's, he's in big trouble. And if Saul catches him, he's going to cut his head off. That doesn't sound very appealing to me. David's in this cave, and he's hiding. The anointed of God is hiding. The one that had the blessing of God is hiding. He is scared out of his mind, and he begins to to write, and some of the psalms were written while he was in that cave. Psalm 42, 142 says, I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out before him my complaints. Before him I tell my troubles. Anybody here ever poured out your complaints to God? Man, we got a few good, honest Christians here. Man, I, poured, I have poured out my complaints to God before. You know, kind of like the kids on my bus. Yeah, you missed their job. Uh, uh, Timmy pulled my hair. They're complaining to me, wanting me to do something about it. <laughs> Most of the time they deserve it. But that's another story. That's another story. <laughs> got off track there. Got a, got a little sidebar there. Here's David in the cave, and he's crying out to God, Lord, I've been anointed. I've been touched. I've had the blessing of God on my life. God, this isn't right. This isn't fair. So David also writes in Psalm 57, while he's in the cave, have mercy on me, O God. 
Have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. My mother, God bless her. Man, she was one of the most godly women I ever met in my life, if not the most godly next to my wife. And she said this over and over, Jeffy, now none of you call me Jeffy now, Dale, you hear me? Jeffy, these things too shall pass. How many of you know these things too shall pass? Whatever we're going through right now, these things too shall pass. And there's David. He's in the midst of disaster. He's in the midst of running for his life. He's crying out to God. And he's saying, hey, God, remember me? <laughs> you, ever, you ever feel that way? Hey, God, remember me? Hello, God, I'm here. I need your help. I'm your anointed. I'm the one that you, you called to be king, God. And here I am. I'm stuck in this cave this this cave and and god there's spiders in here i need your help i need your help so here this is so cool this is god's answer to david this is god's answer in first samuel 22 all these people came to him in the cave all those who were distressed or in debt or discontented gathered around him and he became their commander, about 400 men. What an army. Hey, God, I need your help. I need a military. I need some guys that know how to fight. The king's coming against me. And God, I, I, I need some hand-picked recruits. And God's saying, I'm sending you some hand-picked recruits. I'm sending you those who are distressed, those in debt, those who are on the run by themselves, those who are disconnected, those who are the outcast, those who are the misfits. What an army. Can't you imagine David saying, but God. <laughs> really? <laughs> God, you're, you're really... What do you mean? You're really sending me? Hey, God, did something get messed up in the translation there, God? Hey, God, I need help, and you sent me the misfits. I need help. Amazing how this works, though. Because God, in his divine presence, in his divine power, in his divine ability to do above and beyond what we can ask or think, God made these mighty men, the, the, the destitute, the those in debt, those who are on the run for their own lives. God made them into David's mighty men. Mighty men of God that became conquerors with David. That won battle after battle that killed thousands of them. One guy even, I just snorted, did you hear that? Sorry. One guy even killed thousands of guys by himself. Now that's a man's man. All these people were coming at him, and he's killing them by himself. That's the, what the anointing and the presence of God can do. God can use anyone and everyone who will put their trust in him. So I have great news for you today. If you're feeling down, discouraged, destitute, if you're feeling like a misfit, if you're feeling like somebody that nobody cares about or nobody gives a rip about, I want you to know that God gives a rip about you. And God can put his anointing upon you and upon me, and God can use us no matter the times that we failed or faltered. It's time to get a but God moment. Another one I love. I love this. Anybody ever heard of a guy in the Bible? It's very, very obscure, but his name is Moses. Anybody ever hear of Moses here? Yeah. He's the slow guy, you know, slow as Moses. That's the guy. Here he is, he's out in the desert, and he's on the run for his life, too. He's scared to death. He leaves Egypt because he killed somebody, and he's now in the desert. And he's running from, from Pharaoh, and he's running from God. And he's out in the desert, and he's watching sheep. Now, what could be more comforting than watching sheep? All of them are really, wait, bad. Thank you, you guys got it, the rest of them. I said all of them were bad. Yeah. 
And he's there, he's comforting, and he's watching sheep, and he's, and he's just relaxing. And then all of a sudden, out there in the desert, of all places, comes this bush that's on fire that's not burning up. It's just not burning up. It's, it, it, it's, it's being consumed, but it's not burning up. Now, I want you to know that in the desert, there were a lot of bushes that burn up. The combustion, the heat, the dryness, they would, they would burn up, and then they would incinerate, like... like like a Christmas tree. But this one didn't burn. It was different. Moses goes over to this burning bush and God tells him to take off his shoes because he's on holy ground. And then Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord, because see, God, God told him to do something. Anybody here, God ever tell you to do something and then you said no? Okay. Moses said, or Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord, I have never been eloquent. And <laughs> boy, is that me. Woo. Uh, thank you, Dale. <laughs> have I ever been eloquent? Neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. And the Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord said? Is it not I? See, God, Mo Moses is there and, and, and Moses is saying, but God, but God, you don't understand. But God, I, I can't speak very well. I, I can't go to Pharaoh. There's no way I can be the deliverer of the people. But, but, but God, you don't understand. And God said, wait a minute. I'm the one that puts the words in your mouth. I'm the one that lets you speak. I'm the one that teaches you. Don't worry about it. I wrote this down because I generally mess things up, so I didn't want to. When we say... But God, it's usually an excuse. <laughs> that, that hit because it got real quiet in here all of a sudden. But God, I'm too old. But God, I'm uneducated. But God, I'm not talented. But God, I've failed in the past. But God, I have no experience. But God. But God, I'm, I'm not good enough, but God, I can't, I can't preach like so-and-so or teach like so-and-so or sing like so-and-so. God, I, I just can't witness like so-and-so, but God, but God, but God. And we need to say, quit saying, but God, and let's change it to, okay, God, I'll try. See, that's what God's looking for. He's looking for willingness. Are we willing to try? Are we willing to tell God and tell others what we know, not what you think, <laughs> not what you think you know, but what you know. In Deuteronomy chapter 34, it says, Since then no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all those signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh, to all his officials, to his whole land, no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in all or in the sight of all Israel. Moses, wow, you talk about somebody with power, somebody with anointing, somebody with, with the, the, the direction of the Lord, and now he is the one at the beginning of his ministry is the one that said, I can't do this, God, because I can't talk very well. But God. But God said, you're the greatest man that ever walked the face of the earth. But God said, you're the greatest man. There's no one like you. But God is saying to us when we say, I'm too old, I'm too uneducated, I'm not experienced, I've failed, I blah, 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 blah. The list goes on and on. And you fill in those blah, blah, blahs. God is saying, hey, I want to I tell you something this morning. Are you, are you, are you with me? Hello? Are you with me? Greater is he that is in us. 
finish it than he that is in the world. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. In other words, here, here it is. It's not us. It's him. It's not by power, by strength, by might, but it's by what? His. Thank you, three of us. But it's by his spirit. When the anointing of the presence of the Lord comes upon us, instead of saying, I can't, I can't, I stutter, I'm weak, I'm uneducated, I can't work for God, I don't know enough, I can't do this, I can't do this, God says, don't you worry about it, because I got this. Don't you love it when God's got it? When God's got it, he says, don't worry, but God. So I say, but God, or I say, but God. I say, but God. We can't do it. But God. But God can. One more I want to share with you. Another but God moment is these, is these three guys. And you all know this story better than I do. You could get up here and preach it yourselves. These three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Three of my favorite dudes, man. These guys, these guys had to be amazing. You know the story. King Nebuchadnezzar builds this giant statue, and he says every time you hear the music play, every time you hear Mark up there playing the guitar, you gotta, you got to bow down to this statue. Every time you hear the horns blow, you got to bow down. Made a decree that anybody that didn't do that was going to be thrown into the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego... Says, it says, whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into the blazing fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar. Don't you love that name, Nebuchadnezzar? I'd hate to have to pay for that to be put on a letterman jacket. Imagine how much that would cost. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true? Now the king knew it was true. They wouldn't have been standing before him if he didn't know it was true. He already knew it was true. Sometimes we are confronted to see if we got guts enough to speak the truth. Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? I love that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him. Now, they're talking to the king. They're talking to the king. They're not just talking to some little peasant guy. King Nebuchadnezzar. I, can't you just see a little bobblehead going on there? King Nebuchadnezzar. Here's how it is. King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace... The God we serve is able. I love that. Say, is able. is able. Amen. Is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. And this is the best part in Scripture. But even if he does not, whoo, but even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your God or worship the image of gold set up. That's guts. They better have themselves a, a God moment. And even if he doesn't, we're, we're not, we're not going to bow down to you. And even if he doesn't, we will not bow down. The king ordered the furnace seven times hotter. I don't know how you can do that. <laughs> to me, fire is fire. They kept throwing the wood on. Wasn't it a waste of wood? Don't you think the regular fire would have done it? He kept throwing the wood on. Burn that thing up. Burn it, burn it, burn it. Man, it's so hot that even the guy that threw him in the fire died. Remember the story? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Can't you see them? They're getting bound up, and they said... God's got this. And even if he doesn't, I'm not bowing down to you. Even if you choose to, to make us snap, crackle, and pop, 
I don't care. I'm not bowing down to you. They throw him into the furnace. They throw him right in there. And then look what happened. King's sitting there on his old high and mighty throne. And he's sitting there and he's watching the flames. And he's watching the fire. And he sees the guy that throws him in. He sees him burn up or die from the heat. And the king's sitting there and all of a sudden the king, whoo, he had himself a God moment, didn't he? Huh? He had himself a God moment. He said, look, I see four men walking in the fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth man looks like the Son of God. Hey, guys, didn't we just have three guys sent in there? I see the fourth. <laughs> I love this. You know me. I'm just, I'm just me. I don't know what else to tell you. But, but I, can see, I can see these three guys walking with Jesus down there, the fourth man in the fire. And the king says, come on out, come on out, guys. And they say, just a minute. We're enjoying our presence with God. Don't interrupt us right now. This is our God moment. See, Satan always wants to come and interrupt our God moments. That's a good word right there. That, that, that word will preach. Satan always wants to interrupt our God moments. Those moments when we're in the fire, those moments when, when it seems like the heat of battle was all around us, those moments where it seems like that, that all hope is gone, that we're lost forever, that we just can't make it, we can't bear another moment, those, those times when we say, I just can't handle it, and then God shows up. Whew. Thank you, Cliff, me and you are enjoying this. Everybody else is glad they had extra coffee. Amen. And they're walking together. And then they call him up. They get, they, get out of the, they get out of the fire and they don't even stink like smoke. I can't even build a fire in my fireplace without stinking. Build it up, I got to go wash my hands there and because it smells like smoke. They were walking around in the blazing fire. In the blazing fire. The king says, you're going to burn. And they said, we're not going to bow to you. But God said, God said, I'll be with you in the fire. I'll be with you in the flood. I'll be with you during the hard times and the hardest times of your life. I'll be with you during that terrible doctor appointment. Hmm? I'll be right there with you. I'll be there with you when you're looking at your bank account and there's nothing there to pay your bills. I'll be with you during that time. I'll be with you during that car accident, or I'll be with you during that unexpected phone call from a kid, one of your children. I'll be with you during that. Don't give up. You might be going into the cave sometimes, but God is there, and you can call out to him. You can lay it down at his feet and understand that no matter what fire you're going through, the fourth man is there with you. That's a good word. That's a good word from the Lord. Let's have our own God moment this morning. I'm going to ask the praise team to come. Let's have our own God mo moment this morning. We can be. Now, don't everybody focus on them yet. Because I got a good word to finish this. We can have and we can say, but God, I'm a misfit. But I want you to know that God says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But we can say, but God, I'm not able to speak. I'm not able to teach that class. I'm not able to, to, to witness for him. But God says, I can use Moses. I can use you too. Because my Bible says, how many of you believe the word of God is truth? My Bible says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when those fourth men, or when that fourth man came, when they were walking in the fire, that, that happened so that we could have faith that when we're in the fire, we know he's right there with us. He's right there to encourage us. He's right there to minister to us. That's the God that we serve. Isaiah 43, I love this because we all the time, we all the time hang on to our past and say, well, I, I failed, I'm no good, I'm, I'm worthless. But God says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. How many in here, this place has got a past? Somebody, somebody put a little thing in, in, what did I do with it? Well, I forgot it. 
Sherry, it's in that other envelope there. Yeah, open that up. It's that right there. It's this right here. I love this. You can edit that from the tape if you need to. It says, every saint, this was left on my Bible one day, every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. Man, there's some true words there. He says, forget the former things. Satan wants to always highlight our mess ups. Okay? Uh, there's an ad on the radio that says, you never learn nothing from, a kick, the, from the second kick of a mule. Okay? Jesus said, go and sin no more. Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. That's for us. If his word is the same yesterday, today, and forever, that is, that is for us. We cry out and say, God, I need your help. And God says, listen, this is a but God moment here. The Lord says, he is my rock. Oh, I, I love that. He is my rock. He is my rock. He's my deliverer. He is my rock in whom I take refuge. My soul is the horn of my, or my shield is the, the, the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, my savior. From the violent people you save. Aren't you thankful we have a rock to stand on? Aren't you thankful we're not built on sinking sand, but we're built on the rock, Christ Jesus? It says there in Romans 8, 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Thrown in that fire, couldn't separate him from the love of Christ. Being in that cave couldn't separate David from the love of Christ. Crying out, God, I'm not good enough like Moses, couldn't separate him from the love of Christ. And everything that we're going through in our lives right now is not separating you from the love of Christ. You might say, but God, where are you? And God is saying, I'm right here. Nothing can separate you. And lastly, I quit with this, maybe. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. More than conquerors. The word says if you have just a, a measure of faith. Faith is a grain of mustard seed. Just takes a measure of faith. But God, I'm not real strong in the Lord. A measure of faith. Just a measure of faith more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life. Did you hear that? I am convinced. You might be, you might be old downer Debbie, if your name's here, Debbie, I'm sorry. You might be a downer Debbie, and you might come and say, oh, I don't believe that. I don't care. I don't care. Because I know that I know, and I am convinced that nothing can separate me from the love of God. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in the life of my wife and the wife of my kids. Nothing can separate us from his love. And I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, neither present nor future nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it, Mark. Hallelujah. God loves the imperfect. God loves the imperfect. That's us. They say this mountain can't be moved. Come on, sing it with us. They say these chains can't
power in the name of Jesus. Oh, listen to these words. We've heard that there is no way through. That's what Satan tells you. There's no way through. We've heard the tide will never Say it's going to go on and on and on and never change. We know what you can do, God. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Ah, uh, here's our prayer. Move the immovable. Break the unbreakable. Man, there's some impossible things. We know that hope there's some things I'm facing that are impossible this morning that I need a but God moment in my life. There is there's a time when you step out on faith. I want you to come to the altar this morning. Just come and stand right here because I want to pray with you this morning. Come on in for a second. No matter what, there is power. Thank you. Come on.
Hallelujah, Jesus. How we bless you today, Lord. How we praise you today. Father, we thank you for being in our midst today in a special way. We thank you, Lord, so much. I believe, I believe that we are convinced that you hear our prayers, that you are convinced, Lord, that you're able to touch and do the impossible. And Lord, when we're in that cave where it feels like nobody cares, God, you care. You care. When we feel like we just have no ability to do anything and nobody cares about us, Lord, we want you to know. We want you to know we believe you today when you say nothing can separate us from your love. When we're feeling as though we just can't make it one more day, The fire's too hot. And we just need one more day, God. I'm at the end of my wit. Let us be reminded that fourth man in the fire is still alive and well. I said that fourth man in the fire is still alive and well today. And he'll walk with us. We bless you. And we praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, say it with me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Move the immovable. Break the unbreakable. Take that with us this week. Take that with us. Don't, don't, don't leave that here. Right? Don't, don't leave that here because, folks, the fire is out there. The issues are out there. The problems are out there. Take it with you. In the name of Jesus. Pastor Mike sent a text this morning to send... His and Laura's love to you all. They're looking forward to being back with us next week, and we're looking forward to them being back with us next week. But thank you so much for coming. Thanks for being here. Praise team, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Aren't they great? Aren't they great? Aren't we so blessed? We're so blessed.